Hey everyone, welcome back. And today we're gonna be continuing our theme of red cocktails, maybe? They are cocktails. Yeah, they're cocktails. There's the potentially reddest. a red element to it. Not the reddest thing I've ever yeah. seen. A range. Yeah. Red's a range. Um, so today Third we're gonna be- Third time's the charm. <laughs> we're gonna be making a pomegranate fizz. So stay tuned. So today we're going to be making something called a fizz, and, and as you may see, a uh, little pomegranate seeds here. This is going to be a pomegranate fizz. Now a fizz is a cocktail family, right? It is a cocktail family. So um, what kind of embodies a fizz? Imagine a sour. You have spirit, you have um, acid, you have sweetener. Now add a sparkling component to it. It could be sparkling wine, it could be soda water. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, ginger beer, I believe. We're doing ginger beer for this one. Can't right? go wrong with ginger beer. Absolutely. It's true. So uh, so yeah, that's kind of the, the map of the fizz. Now there are different types of fizzes out there too. Mm -hmm. Um, if you add an egg white to it, it's called a royal fizz. Sounds so fancy. Wow. I know. And that's what, actually I feel, what we're going to be making today. I feel very regal. <laughs> uh, and to kind of go through that whole royal phase and uh, everything, if you add a whole egg to it, it's technically called a golden fizz. So is that like better than royal? Or I don't worse? know. Where does that rank? I don't know. Is there I've... like a diamond fizz if you add no. something else? Diamonds. <laughs> That sounds crunchy. <laughs> Don't but, recommend it. Uh, yeah, Your product I, cost just goes like through the roof. Who can afford yeah, that? Doesn't make any sense at all. That would be ridiculous. That would be absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so what are the ingredients that we are using for our royal, royal, regal? Royal, royal, royal fizz today. Fizz yep. today. Um, so we're gonna be using gin as our base spirit. Um, this is a sample that we got um, and it's got um, some ginger. Um, in it as well, so it's going to oh. go really well with the ginger beer to amplify it a little bit. I want to uh, take a look at this. Yeah, this is this called is... Madame Paterini's uh, Gin. It's actually from Utah. Oh, that's not really where I think of getting I gin know. from, but that's actually kind of fun. Yeah, so this one uh, has a interesting history. Um, I can neither, neither confirm nor deny this. I think it's a brand new uh, distillery uh, last couple of years, but the Madame Paterini, just look up, up the website. It's a really colorful story. Uh, this is the... Um, I remember the, the distillery was telling me that they pride themselves on being a little bit tongue-in-cheek and kind of playing with the idea of being in Utah. So um, you'll have to take a look at that because right. if I recount it here, I'm sure I will be wrong. And offend everybody. It's true. <laughs> it's true. But for now, um, it's a great gin, and so we thought we'd throw it in our royal fizz. Yeah, absolutely. So we have the gin, we have our pomegranate and cranberry syrup. Um, a little bit of lemon juice and of course ginger beer with egg white as well. So those are all the ingredients um, that we're going to use in this cocktail. Sounds delicious. Perfect. Well, um, so before we start, um, the cranberry and pomegranate uh, syrup, um, the way we made this is basically just macerated everything together and just added some sugar. It's not what it sounds like. I know. <laughs> it sounds terrible. Macerate, <laughs> which is different from masticate, right. which is to chew, and other words, yep, which I'm not going to say. Sounds very familiar with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> to macerate is a technique that we use a lot for mm -hmm. making syrups, and this works really well with fruit. Um, I didn't know that you could do it with pomegranate, but here you go. Yeah. Um, so you take pomegranate seeds, and I think we cheated this time and bought pomegranate seeds, right? Uh, I've broken down so many pomegranates in my life. I do not want the stains. I don't want the headache. I don't want Plus, little tiny seeds flying everywhere. See, that it's sounds like mess. fun now. It's a mess. Plus, we couldn't find any. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> true story. There's the real <laughs> Hashtag true story. Um, so we bought some pomegranate seeds. You throw some sugar in it. You stir it all up. And you either, option one, wait a really long time. Yep. And when you come back, you're going to find a delicious, beautiful syrup in the bottom of your glass. Or option two, if you're sketchy like me and you don't like waiting, you can actually throw it in the microwave for just how long? I All I did was about 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah. Super fast. Um, and that sort of expedites the macerate process and you still end up with a delicious and lovely syrup. Ta-da! Is that literally go. where that came from? This is where it came from. So obviously strain that out um, and there you go. So it could not be easier. Um, again, uh, if you want to expedite it, the microwave is a good way to do that, but you're definitely going to want to let it cool down before you use it in a cocktail. Yeah, and um, I use a little bit of cranberry juice as a liquid as well. Um, and cranberries and pomegranates have very similar uh, flavors uh, to me. Nice tart, yeah. um, a little bit on that red berry side. Um, so they go really well together. Um, Plus the color. The, it brings the color that we're Come looking for. Come on, red! Yeah, and this is actually a really good point. If you actually heat um, pomegranate seeds, 
they turn this kind of muddy brown. Really? They oxidize and they get like deep purple with a slight brown uh, kind of like uh, color to it. Huh. Um, but this is like on a boiler or on a um, on the on a stove. Oven. Yeah. For okay. A while. So, so maybe no more than thirty seconds. Yeah. Be careful yeah. with how, the amount of time you add there. Huh. Um, so yeah, that's how we made the syrup. Um, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So I guess maybe we should make this cocktail then, right? I'm so thirsty. I know. All the talking. Parched. Blah, blah, blah. Absolutely make the damn cocktail. Parched. Okay. Here we go. Look how sad this is. <laughs> Look how sad I know. This so is. this is going to go really well. Uh, this is a bud vase, I think. I'm fairly certain for is flowers. It? Or I'm is it just sure. a stemless? Does it really matter? Potato, tomato, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's not the same. That's how it goes. All right, so, so what are you doing? Two ounces of gin. So I have the Madame Paterini's gin here. I'm gonna do a full ounce of the syrup in here. And you see how beautiful red this is. It's not gonna stay this way. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And That's definitely something we've been learning over the course of these last few weeks. As if you've been joining us on our lives each week, every week we say we're making something red and well, let's be honest, they're not turning out terribly Hues, red. Shades. Shades, maybe. Liberally. Uh, yeah, liberally applied. Yeah. But um, I think what we're finding is it's when you add other ingredients with color, like for example, citrus. Um, when you add your yellow, when you add your uh, egg white with that beautiful foam, um, that really sort of dilutes that red color. So that's been one of the things we've been learning. But it's not gonna stop us. Damn right, we're gonna keep shaking this thing. Still thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> um, so last week we talked a little bit about the difference between dry shaking and reverse dry shaking. You mm -hmm. want to kind of recap some of the differences? Let me step up on my soapbox here. There we go. <laughs> no, we don't actually have anything for me to step on. Um, so um, when you use, when you make an egg white cocktail, um, you can just shake it. You can just shake it normally. You throw the cocktail in a glass, you add some egg white, you shake it, you strain it, ta-da, it's a cocktail. Now if you, um, I can't back up again. If you dry shake it, that's mm -hmm. the word I'm looking for, then what you do is kind of a two-part shaking process. So first of all, you close it up and shake it now, mm -hmm. i.e. no ice. You, you close it up, you shake it, you open it up, add ice, shake it again, and then strain it out. That's called a dry shake. Mm -hmm. And it's two shakes, that's the, the trick. Now, recently we've been seeing a lot of people talking about the reverse dry shake. Um, it's very popular. I, it, the reason behind that is that it supposedly it gives a bigger foam. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is when you, you start here, throw all your ingredients into a cocktail shaker, now add ice, shake it with ice, strain it out, shake it again without ice. So you see where the reverse comes right. in. Now, the thing is, is that when you compare the results of these two, someday we're actually gonna have to do this up close. So I know, you can see this. a little side by side. Um, you definitely get more volume with the reverse dry shake, but the volume comes from the bubbles themselves being bigger. Right. So with a dry shake, you get like a really beautiful velvety foam. Like creamy foam on it. Yeah, it's yeah. so creamy and you get an excellent, beautiful mouth feel and it, it's got a really tight structure. The, basically the bubbles are tiny. Mm -hmm. And so you get a really tight structure and it's got, got a, like a nice sort of solid uh, feel to it. Whereas with the reverse dry shake, the bubbles are bigger and so it's a little bit more bubbly. Yeah, um, and not uniform too. So you yeah. get a, a big mixture of different kind of bubbles there. You get some light bubbles, you get a lot bigger bubbles mm -hmm. in there. Um, so when this, when we're doing stencil work or we're garnishing with bitters on top, it actually makes a pretty significant difference. Yeah, you find that the, the standard dry shake gives you a much tighter pattern because when those big bubbles pop, of course it makes a bigger difference to the overall visual sort of nature of the cocktail. So that's been my experience. Again, I'll step off my little soapbox here. I like the dry shake. I prefer it over the reverse dry shake. I think the presentation is better. I think the mouthfeel is better, um, but I say try them both. All right. Um, and then you'll see why I'm right. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and uh, shake, dry shake this cocktail. And as Julia said, we're just building the foam right now. You're doing great. Thanks. Who needs a gym? Who needs right. a gin? Jim. Oh, I gin. Need... Yeah. And we'll add some ice to this guy. Sorry for the reach. He's learned his lesson not to have me do the ice. <laughs> and now we just give it a good shake. Foamy. There it is. 
All right, so. Do you need a fine strainer or are you just gonna nope. go Hawthorne? No, just our Hawthorne. So we have really tight coils on this Hawthorne and this really helps to separate all those little tiny uh, particles. Um, I have been using fine strainers for a long time, so it's kind of like second nature to me, um, but you really don't need it. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this and this will actually help to kind of preserve some of those bubbles too. I, uh, they won't get caught. Hate to say it. It's red, right? It's not red. Tell me it's red. <laughs> Lie to me. It's beautiful, but it's not red. Right. Look at that foam though. It's so much better than if we had reverse stretched. <laughs> <laughs> it's so a you beautiful want to get all pink. That foam. Well, you missed a bit. Almost red, right? Light red. Light. -ish. Light red. Red. Red plus white. It is a really pretty color though. I'm it sure. Is. You, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but I'll bring it a little bit closer. Um, and then this will get a little bit more exaggerated as the air kind of starts to go up. Um, we're seeing a lot of that emulsion right now. Um, so it's trapping a lot of the air bubbles in there. So I'm gonna have a little fun with this garnish. Um, I uh, tried this earlier and I, so I know it works, but um, with any egg white cocktail, oh, we need ginger beer. Ooh, Most important part. That was close. So we're just gonna add a couple ounces of ginger beer. And this is really gonna help to kind of lighten the drink up a little bit too. So how much are you adding, or is it just gonna be filled to the top of the glass? It's about an ounce and a half. Okay. So there we go. Beautiful, look at that. Ah. I think we're done. Ooh, that was close. Yeah. But now um, what's gonna happen? But yeah, so it's gonna add a lot of loft to it. It's gonna really kind of pump up the volume on that egg white as well. Um, so I... I think it's gonna see spill. see if this is gonna work. I think it's gonna spill. So what I did, I'll go ahead and talk about it real quick. You see this perfect circle of lemon. Uh, I took a nice big cut of lemon. You can actually see it right here. Oh, can't use that one now. So I took a nice big cut of lemon. I know that's already bigger than the top of my um, glassware. That, that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just gonna cut out some of the pith here real quick. Because uh, there's, um, you, you have to cut so deep that the lemon actually kind of hangs out in there. So we gotta just remove some of that pith and definitely the fruit. There we go, just to make it a little bit easier. So then um, I already know I have a stencil cutter here, um, just a cookie cutter stencil. Um, and I already know this will fit inside my glass. So now I'm just gonna hold it down and cut a perfect little circle out of it. Now, if I hadn't thrown it on the floor, you we could have used it already, but now you, I have to watch me do this. You wouldn't have seen the full step-by-step step process. I wish I could say that was on purpose, but really, <laughs> I'm just a klutz. And you really do have to force force it down because it is pretty thick. Um, so here we go. We're going to add this right to the top. Actually, handy dandy tweezers. Just like Beautiful. A hat. It does look like a hat, yeah, and like a little beret. We're just gonna add a few <laughs> pomegranate seeds on top. I still think it's gonna spill. Oh, it's definitely gonna spill. I mean, I will say that foam is really holding its own, but man, does that look a little funny with the hat. I love this. There so we much. go. Perfect. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see? Hold on, I'll bring it up a little bit closer. This looks like somebody with a little that. bit of a mop head. <laughs> but how cool is that? It so looks maybe a take little... it easy on the ginger beer a little bit. Maybe do like Leave a little seven, space. you know, um, uh, I think ounce and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's got a little bit of a Ramus Gin Fizz air <laughs> to it. I love it. It's it's kind of adorable. But it's got red in it. But it has red. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> you know, we should definitely not quit our day jobs. No, absolutely. Who does this? Oops. <laughs> yeah. But there we have it. Um, it's really delicious, uh, really floral. Um, I think that's where the whole bud vase concept for me came in uh, into play. Um, and it's really vibrant color. Like that's a really cool looking uh, cocktail. It really is. Um, we need a little work on the volume. Can you go ahead and well, that? Let me, let me ask you this. Um, as a professional, in mm. your professional opinion, how the heck do I drink this? You don't. You just look <laughs> at it. Just look at it. I it's mean, so pretty. We can do that. We can look at it. But I did say, <laughs> I hope Hold you on. guys can see let this. Me, uh, let me help you out with this. This is going to be messy. Let's go ahead and just take this garnish off so you can actually try it. I still think I'm gonna get a mustache. Oh yeah, this. absolutely. Um, and the, the, another important thing with egg white cocktails is to zest, uh, put a little zest across the top of it. Should I do a straw? Yeah, there's some in that drawer right there. Um, what this is gonna do, especially since we don't have any ice in this, um, that's one of the characteristics of a fizz, is not having ice. 
Um, you can put ice, but um, like a Remus Gin Fizz traditionally doesn't have ice in it. Um, so put a little lemon oil across the top of it and that'll keep that sulfur smell from the egg whites um, really getting up in your face. I, it's got kind of a soda fountain look to it. It does. I, I dig it, I do. Wow, that is delicious. It's really foamy. Yeah. I think that when you add the egg whites to the... <laughs> they're gonna sink. You think so? <laughs> you know what, they actually look really great. So what Chris is doing, I don't know if you can see on your screen, but Chris is adding the pomegranate seeds right to the top of the foam. It's like a meringue, this foam is so thick. It's, I mean, we're talking stiff peaks here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you combine, is it the ginger beer that really adds that? It adds a foam, it builds up the foam for sure, but uh, the dry shake definitely helps. Your inner bartender could I can't not help handle it. that, could you? No. I'm gonna try to give you a view of this. I don't know if you can see it there. Let me try to tilt it without spilling. See, look how strong that foam is. Yep. It's really, really delicious. The cre Even though I'm drinking from the bottom of the glass, the creaminess really comes through. It's a shame that you can't ah! try this. I'm gonna try. I have cooties. Oh, that's delicious. It, it's mm. honestly, it's got a little bit of a creamsicle sort of nature mm. to it, but I mean that in the best way. It's not overly sweet. The tartness from the pomegranate and the cranberry really comes through. This is problematically good. That's super tasty. It's honestly like and a milkshake. Red. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so there we have it. That is uh, pomegranate fizz. Uh, this is something I've worked on many times, this particular cocktail in various forms, um, but it's really easy to kind of do your own variations on it. You know, try a different sparkling element to it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can infuse the gin, you can have a fully different syrup. I could see this with white wine being like. Yeah, like really, a sparkling really white wine. Good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, one of the ones that I made for the holidays was uh, with a Lambrusco, which is a sparkling dessert red wine. See, that might make it redder. Could, it actually turns super purple. Does it uh, really? Yeah, it's crazy oh, purple. Oh, I'm surprised. So, uh, but yeah, that's really, really delicious. Highly recommend something like that. But I mean, you can take this thing anyway, any direction you want to go. Um, try a different base spirit, infuse a base spirit, do a split on it. The um, gin is a really nice choice though. I will say the, the and what you have is a ton of ingredients that each bring their own yeah. sort of floral nature to it. And it really ends up being this just like bouquet, creamsicle, so milkshakey good. goodness. So pretty. So pretty. <laughs> so it may not be the reddest thing I've ever seen, but it might just be the tastiest. This one is a delicious cocktail. The foam is awesome. And in case you haven't noticed, we might have drank a lot of it between the last shot and just now. It's, it's pretty freaking tasty. It's that good. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say there are red elements to it. We yep. got the pomegranates in there, they're at the bottom. They eventually fell through. Yeah. So I think we nailed that challenge. I think red was done. Close enough. Close done. enough. <laughs> so in the meantime, head on over to our website, abarabove.com and check out the shop. Um, this month, for the month of February, we have our four-piece bar kit on deal. I think it's 15% off, if I remember correctly. Um, you're doing a great job. I love the, the Vanna Thank action you. there. Thank you. Yep. It's got our shaker set. It's got our jigger. jigger. Ooh. No egg included. No egg included. That's true. You don't want us to include the egg. Yep. And, and it's got our Hawthorne strainer. Absolutely. I think you're going to love it. These are our top selling products. We put them all in one box um, just because people wanted them. And it's got everything you need to make this particular drink and so many more. Um, definitely go check it out at shop.abarabove.com. I think you'll like it. Until next week, cheers. cheers.